Hey DIY queens, I just wanted to show you guys how I recreated this super trendy dress I've been seeing all over social media, like everywhere. So I wanted to show you how to make one for the summertime so you have one on Go Girl. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm just starting off by marking where I want my cutout detail to start. And then I'm also going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure up how far I need to extend the tie piece. So I ended up extending it an additional three inches from the top of my dress. And then I'm just measuring now how long I need to make the dress because the dress wasn't long enough. You want to make sure that you add the additional at least three to four inches because when we create our little tie piece, it's going to take away from some of that length at the top of your dress. Next, I'm just taking my dress on fold and I'm cutting out uh, the front piece as well as the back piece. So as you can see, it's a little bit longer at the bottom because as I said, I had to extend it to make it ankle length. But from here, you're gonna measure in two inches and you just want to curve it into the side seam. Now for me, I should have made the tie piece at the top a little bit more straight. So, um, when I fold it over, it's like a lot easier to work with, but either way I made it work. But just make the tie piece a little bit more straight and then curve it out into the side seam if that makes sense. As you can see, the back looks exactly like the front. It's just literally, it just it's just minus that little cutout detail portion. Okay, so then next for the bra top. Um, so I used a bra, as you can see. <laughs> but I would highly recommend that you use a sports bra and then um, around the straps area, just kind of thin it into making, you know, skinny straps. But um, if you use a bra like me, um, I did end up extending the bra cup three inches, as you can see. And I did that because I have fuller breasts and you know, like how your coverage is on your bra. So I didn't want my boobs to be too out um so i did want to add a little bit more coverage and then towards the bottom you're not going to see it in this video because i had to go back and redo it but towards the bottom i did add an additional um five inches and i did that because when you're cutting out this bra portion you're going to lose some um you're going to lose some of that fullness in the cup of your bra if that makes sense so if you're fuller chested like me, you definitely want to add some additional length at the bottom of your bra. And I say this because like I said, <laughs> um, it's going to take away from some of that fullness in the cup. Now, I feel like that only happened for me because I fully lined my dress. I feel like if you're using a knit fabric, like this fabric was so stretchy. Like I feel like if I didn't fully line it, I could have got away with not adding the additional, but I did. And I only did that because I didn't want like, you know, I, I, I don't know. Like sometimes like I don't, I don't like dresses that like, I feel like you can see straight through it. Like you can see the imprints of everything. And I, I, don't, I don't like that. Like I want my dress to sculpt my body and not just like wear over my body you know what I'm saying <laughs> but yeah so as you can see um I did mix the front with the back but if you're using a sports bra you literally can just trace the front and the back um mine is literally just the front going into the back so the seam is in the back of my dress right so as you can see here um I ended up having to cut four I did add half an inch of seam allowance all the way around and again, I'm only cutting four because mine's is fully lined. If you don't want to fully line yours, you don't have to. But, you know, I did it for me. Next, I'm just using the length of my bra straps to cut out the straps for my top. 
um, and then you're going to cut out your wraps by one and a half inches just to make it easier when you have to serge or either stitch it together now as i referenced earlier if you're using a sports bra literally the same thing you're just going to measure the strap portion of the sports bra and that's how you're going to get your strap length now keep in mind if you're using a sports bra again so at, just like on your bra how it like transitions from the the cup to the strap you want to make that transition on the sports bra and if you have to put your bra over the sports bra to gauge where it's best to do so then you can do that as well Also, because of my bust, like I really questioned this, but I'm glad I did. I went back and I added a three inch strip here in the middle of the top, just to give me a little bit more coverage. So as I said, for the front, you'll have two pieces. For the back, you'll have two pieces. You'll have two straps and then you'll have four front pieces and two of the little cutout sections for the top. So first you're gonna start off by taking your top piece right sides together with the little middle section piece I'm sorry y'all like I don't know what to call it <laughs> and you're going to sew it together at half of an inch of seam allowance and you're going to repeat it on the other side as well as well as the lining piece So I'm going to go ahead and create my straps. So you're going to sew them right sides together at half of an inch of seam allowance. And you can either straight stitch or serge it. Can y'all believe I actually use my, I believe I use my sewing machine the whole time throughout this video. And I actually always use my serger. I was really surprised, but yeah. <laughs> Next, I'm just going to take my loop turner. You can use a loop turner or either um, a bobby pin and you're literally just going to feed it through your straps here and you're just going to, if you're using a loop turner, you're going to, you know, latch it onto the fabric and then just roll it over. Um, but if you're using a bobby pin, then it's a little bit more easier. But yeah, you're just going to turn your drawstrings right side out. Using your loop turner, be gentle so it doesn't detach from the fabric and you have to restart it over or it gets stuck so just take your time and it'll be done soon enough okay so then now we're going to attach our straps to our top as well as go ahead and sew up um, the top of our top or the like the neckline portion of the top so as you can see i'm just placing these straps onto the top and i'm just pinning them in place 
and make sure they're inside of the top i always do this every time i make something that has straps for whatever reason like i sew them on the outside and then i have to take it apart and then like put them on the inside you would think i know it by now but <laughs> which i do but it's just i don't know i guess because it's straps like i think oh they're outside but yeah just make sure you have them pinned in the inside so you don't have to do any seam ripping and once i've got the top of my shirt pinned down i'm just going to stitch along the perimeter there that's shown at half an inch of seam allowance and just for extra security when i'm going over the straps i do back stitch over it following that guys you're then going to stitch the hem of the top closed but just keep in mind to leave um, an opening just to turn the top right side out and then once you've done that you'll literally just close up that opening and stitch the stitch the back middle seam together right sides together at half of an inch of seam allowance okay and then this is how it looks once i've done that our top is complete um i actually did have to go behind it and make me another one because my boobs are like really full um but when i made the second one which you'll see in the video i did do a front and a back piece either way it won't matter y'all Okay, so then next we're going to move on to our front piece. We're going to stitch the cutout details at half of an inch of seam allowance, right sides together, and then go ahead and also hem the bottom of the skirt as well. Once I did that, I did go ahead and turn the front piece right side out and where the cutout detail seam is as well as the hem, I stitched it down at a fourth of an inch of seam allowance just for more of a professional look and also to hold that salvage fabric in place. This is how we're looking very nice and professional and clean and that's how the cutout portion looks as well so next we're going to move on to the back pattern piece of our dress 
I keep saying pattern piece. We're going to move on to the back of our dress. You're going to hem the bottom at half of an inch of a seam allowance as well as um, hem the top at half of an inch of a seam allowance. Before I did that, I did take off two inches on fold from the top of my dress just because I know like typically for me because I have a fuller butt like I always get a gap in the back. So just to avoid that, I did take off some fabric and that's what you can see me doing here and I just blended it in to the side seam. And after you're doing that, you're literally just going to turn the back piece right side out as well. And you're going to top stitch the hem of the top and the bottom of the back piece of your dress. okay so now we are ready to sew the side seams together so you're literally just going to right sides together stitch your front and your back Alrighty, of your dress and at half an inch of seam allowance step. And so and this is when I finish, finish you really excited y'all you know you just, or you when can you're just, sewing something um, you start exact getting real chance and, and then that's when you start just keep in mind up, if you like that's what was stitch it, then just <laughs> stitch close but to literally the stitch you're gonna just take the um little tie portion that we created and you're just going to for me this is why I said create a straighter uh, tie portion when you're making your cutout detail because mine wasn't straight enough at the top so I just had to like kind of bunch it together and then I just um, stitched it down at half of an inch of seam allowance which it still worked um, fine but it was just a lot of fabric bunched up so just to avoid that and just to have that little tie piece like you know flat with no bunching then you want to just make sure that when you're cutting your tie piece detail that it's like straight and then you go into a curve Like at least leave five to six inches of straightness for the tie portion. So I'm just placing a few pins there just for security, especially being that I like made some invisible ruching. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to stitch it down at half of an inch of seam allowance. And then go behind and just cut off that excess from the flap of the tie piece and that's it y'all like this dress is super cute i can't wait for y'all to see it and this is how we're looking this is super cute y'all and it was super easy if you like this video make sure you like comment and subscribe if you have any questions please feel free to let me know and until next time guys love you guys stay safe bye